Now you could if you wanted to just create the Empire of Frank here, but this is way more fun. Boom. Hey, I am Feedback Gaming. This is more Crusader Kings 3. I played this yesterday on live stream and I had a blast. So I thought I'd recreate it right now as a video. And what we're going to do is one of the tougher achievements in Crusader Kings 3, which is called Carling Consolidation. There you go, I got it first time. New game, Carlings. And the objective is to make only one Carling independent. That would be you. We're going to go with Charles the Bald. You start off with the most levies. You start off with the most land as well. And the beauty of this campaign is you get to blob out really quickly and you can do lots of cheese to get the way you want to be. This is so much fun. Let's go. Start. Hey, do you like Crusader Kings 3 content? Do you want to see more Crusader Kings 3 content? How about we get 3k likes on this video and I'll make another CK3 video just for you. Here we go. We are the king of West Francia and our relatives have the kingdom of Lotharigia, our half-brother, East Francia. We also have the Duke of Bavaria, who is my nephew and cousin. Nephew and cousin. Hmm. Hmm. He's currently not independent, but if he does become independent, we can take him out because we have got a claim on the Duchy of Bavaria. And finally, the Kingdom of Italy. That's right, Italy was independent as a unified nation, kind of, before it was unified again in the modern era. And it's currently ruled by my other nephew. So technically, it doesn't look too difficult. There's just three kingdoms. I have claims on all three of them. I can just take them out all in wars. What makes this quite tricky is because we're related, we have the option to ally. And if, for instance, if East Francia and Italy ally, it makes a very strong block to the east. So the objective is to slightly chip away at the kingdoms until we get strong enough to take on the big coalition at the end. Are you not familiar with the history? Well, my great granddad was the first Holy Roman Emperor, Karl the Great, and he unified all these four kingdoms under one mighty empire. But when he died, the realm shattered between all the family members, and this is what we've currently got right now. I am going to relive Karl the Great's legacy and unify all the kingdoms. First of all, Charles the Bald, 43 years of age, and he is currently a scholar. Let's hop into learning and have a little cheeky look. Scholar's pretty good, and so is theologian, but right now we need to hold a body, because right now we are one of the oldest landed kings of Carlings. And in that case, 43 is getting on a little bit. If we can get hold the body, we might make it to 70, possibly 80. Without it, we're probably going to get to about 60. So you've got two options here. Option one is to reload the game until you get hold of body because it's randomized. Or I'm going to reset perks. This will incur stress, but then I can redistribute the points back into hold of body. So let's go for medicine focus and boom, drop all those traits. And there we go. We are now have hold of body. If you click on here, you can see my health is now good. Next up, we're going to hop into the council, click on our queen, and she can give us plus six to domain size. And the result of that is plus one to my domain size. So therefore, we can consolidate more of our power. Consolidate again, more consolidation. Yay. First thing I'm going to do is distribute these extra holdings to my family. We click here, then click on grant to. Then we click on the filter. Then we can filter out specific people. We want them to be French. We want them to be Christian. We want them to be not rulers. And we also want them to be Carlings. And there you go. We're left with just our sons and grandsons. I'm going to sort them by their steward skill. And in this case, your son will get to grab this. Boom. And then this one as well. This one. Yeah, this one too. And we'll grant this one too. I'm not sure how I'm related to this guy, but he is Carling. So there you go. And finally, this one. Herbert Carling. And that will do just fine. So now we are seven of seven in our domain holding. See that in the top right? That means we will not incur any relations penalty or penalty to our amount of levies or tax income. One thing I will say about Charles the Bald he is an horrendous diplomat. One in diplomacy, terrible. Yeah, so using your ability to diplomatically get you out of sticky situations is not going to be an option with Charles because he sucks at talking. But what we are going to do is if we go into our council, we can sway our archbishop and this will give better relations. See, 52% chance that's not very good. But it is what it is. As you can see here, if we make the realm priest really happy, possible of 2.6 gold per month and a potential 134 levies. Levies, not a big deal, but the extra tax will make a massive difference. If we get rich, no one will mess with us because we will have big fat armies. Oh, monarchies, aren't they great? Next up, we need to create some men at arms. It's under the military tab, and we're going to create some professional soldiers. My advice is to go with bowmen and go with light footmen. We don't have a lot of money to begin with. We're just going to have to settle for this. I'm going to go two months to begin with. One, one, and two. Recruit some more troops. And then straight away, we are going to declare war on one of our relatives. 
Drop the rally point here. Then I'm going to declare war for the entirety of the kingdom of Lotharigia. And he currently does not have any allies. Perfect. Declare war. Military tab. Left click on raise all armies. So if we click on the war screen here, we can have a look what we're up against. So this is me, Charles the Bald. And we have 4,700 levies, total soldiers. I believe this is our nephew. He currently has 2,800. So it is inferior to ours. So in this case, we definitely look like we can win this without much of a fight. The best way of gaining war score and achieving your objectives is to one, fight battles. That gets you a lot of war score. You'll capture members in battle and they can work towards your overall war score. Two, you can capture holdings. That works as well, but it's quite a grind. And three, probably the most effective is to go for the capital region. And there's a chance you may capture someone important will give you a big boost to your war score. So first of all, let's just start sieging in this direction and see how far we get. We've got two options, right? Do we siege this down completely or do we engage their army? Because I said to you, engaging armies and taking them out is probably one of the best ways and the easiest ways to get war score. The war score is here, 0%. If it's in the green, that means it's towards me. And if you capture this holding here, boom, we have 13%. We get to 100%, that means we insta win. So what I'm gonna try and do is engage his army immediately and knock him out so before he sieges down my holding here. He's running away, so we're gonna chase him. Chase him into the woods, into the mountains. Can I catch him? Ideally though, I don't really wanna be fighting in this region because if we hover over here, it says we're gonna be defending in hills. He has a better commander and he's defending a river crossing. So in all fairness, I don't really want to fight that but what i'm gonna do is continue to push him towards their capital it looks like we're gonna have to take another region yeah we'll have to seize this one down before we push into the capital because if we push straight for the capital we'll incur extra casualties we don't want to suffer 232 casualties we just want to push directly to the capital and uh as we take this holding anyway we'll gain a little bit more war score so it'll be worth it in the long run anyway and there we go we're sieging once again so we've gotten lucky here looks like our siege is ahead of their siege the minute the siege is complete we instantly go on top of them and chase them down again that means they'll break their siege and run away yep can we chase them once again, don't really want to engage that. Way too many penalties. We're in getting incurring too many casualties. Right, back to the capital. Siege it down once again. And there we go. I'm not going to mess around this time. We are going to fully engage them. We've got a lot of penalties against us. If we click here and have a look, it says they've got a better commander, which is not actually true. When it comes down to extra skills, what I'm going to go for is faithful and church and state. You'll see why. More soldiers, you will probably win. And he is once again chose to run away. Oh, we've engaged them in the mountains here. Go for speed. And say we've got a massive advantage in combat, as well as the massive advantage with the map soldiers we've got. And they have no men at arms as well. So easy win. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. We're going to split the army into two now and siege two holdings. One here and the other one will go here. Right, we've got max relations with our realm priest. He's given us all the money and he's given us all the levies. That is perfect. Now we're going to boost relations with the true daddy of Catholicism. That's right, the Pope. All right, two holdings have been sieged down and we're going to intercept their armies once again. More than likely they'll run away. Nope, they're actually going to fight me here and they're at a massive disadvantage. And I think this is the final battle. 100% enforce our demands. Boom, we have taken the kingdom of Lotharigia. Done. Disband the armies. So now we've taken such a huge amount of land, you can have a lot of issues with people that are very, very unhappy that you rule over them. Yeah, because you did it by conquest. Not usually the best way of making friends, right? So we're going to hop into our council. We are going to just change out all the advisors that aren't powerful vassals. Powerful vassals like to be of the council and it gives them a big boost to their relations. So in this case, you are best. Boom. Uh, Marshal here. No, he's good because he's a powerful one. We also have a spy master. You're a powerful vassal too. Ooh, but he really, really hates me. Ooh. Got to be careful with your spy masters because if you end up with a spy master that really, really despises you, they might try and kill you. 14 relations, assign him four relations. That's a lot better. Also, what I'm going to do is select my chancellor and tell him to go for domestic affairs. And what that does is if you look really closely right here, direct vassal opinion plus zero, sad. But each month, it will increase vassal opinion by 0 0.18 up to a maximum of 4.5. This guy is not exactly the best diplomat, but he'll do with what we've got. This is the progress so far. We definitely are the big daddy of Europe. So let's have a look. So West Francia, potentially 6,000 levies, currently 4,500. As time goes on, our levy size will increase higher and higher. It's currently low because most of them died in the last war. East Francia, they've got 2,300. Italy, 2,600. 
we definitely are the big, big daddy. Now, what I want to just do right now is take a deep breath and just chill for a little while. If I take too much land in one go, once again, we're going to have to deal with internal issues. That's right, Middle Ages politics. And if we go on to factions here, more than likely, if we wait, we'll see some factions form. Exactly. So as you can see, a faction's formed here. This gentleman says he wants to be the king of West Francia. Hang on a second. I'm the king of West Francia. How dare you? And these guys are all backing him in his scheme to become the leader of West Francia. If he gains more than 80% of the threshold, he is start to enforce his demands towards me, resulting in me giving in and he becomes the king of West Francia or we have a civil war situation. The easiest thing you can do to mitigate these is just to have a larger army overall. And the easiest way to have a larger army is just to create more men at arms. The minute though, we're having a little bit of a money problem. We will get back to that later, but for now, we're just gonna sit and earn money monthly. And our realm priest is doing a very mighty fine job of giving us lots and lots of money. Who would have thought the Catholic Church was so profitable? Hey, hey, and here we go. So this guy who wants the Kingdom of West Francia now has enough power to push his threshold. In 20 months time, he'll send me an ultimatum saying, give up your title or civil war. So my advice to you right now is trying to fix this problem by boosting relations with people who are more easily converted. One cheesy way of doing that is selecting the guy that has the most contribution to the faction. In this case, 25%. This guy is the most, and as it trickles down, he gets smaller and smaller and smaller. 25%, and we'll grant him a vassal. And this is his rightful liege, so this will make him very happy. Plus 40 relations. Good. We can do the same for all the others too. This guy's plus 20 relations. We'll give him a vassal as well. And will this cause them to drop off? Yep. Still above the threshold by a tiny amount though. Like this guy. Yep. This guy. Yep. And this guy. Vassals are your little bargaining chip that allows you to give you like nice little boost of relations just to fix these kind of annoying situations that could crop up. And there we go. Now they're below the threshold to press their ultimatum, meaning it's a problem that we don't have to deal with unless someone else joins the faction, contributes more of their soldiers, and then pushes it over again. We have to keep a close eye on this because it will keep jumping back and forth every now and then. So we have a bunch of daughters here. And one little thing that I love to do with daughters is to marry them off with people who are godlike warriors. 22 martial. Wow. One other thing you could do with your daughters as well is you could use those to get alliances. So for instance, there's an option here that we can marry into the Byzantine Empire. This will potentially give you an alliance with the Byzantine Emperor and he has 5,000 levies. In most cases, that would prevent any possible faction that could try and overthrow you. In short, it means they will need more soldiers to push over the threshold because your army size is a lot larger in comparison. What I am going to do is my son and with my player heir, is I am going to marry him into the Byzantine Empire. And they do have a daughter. She's eight years old. When she comes of age, we will marry. And then, boom, alliance complete. We are now allied. And if we hop on to the factions, you're going to notice something's going to happen here. Watch this. There you go. And you can notice there the faction threshold dropped massively, which means all of the levies from the Byzantine Empire are pulled together with my levies, meaning the overall amount of force needed to overthrow me is needs to be a lot higher. Hence why, practically, it's borderline impossible. Right now, I feel a lot more comfortable for the kingdom of East Francia from my nephew. Oh no, from my half-brother. Get it right, Dave, my half-brother, who also is my rival, and also has not a very large army, and also has a capital right on the border with us. Ooh, that's kind of small. Yikes. Ugh. How convenient. Check the alliances before you declare war because they may actually have a really powerful ally that could cause you a lot of problems. But our army size now is almost triple theirs. So we're going to raise the levies and just grab their capital. Okay, this siege is not going very well, but they've got, by the looks of things, probably a very good siege engineer. So I'm going to have to engage them because they're going to siege this down quicker than I can siege. The base race will not work if I can't siege as quick as him. We're going to engage him right now. Bit of a, a chase game, cat and mouse. And we've intercepted him. No, we're still chasing once again. They're very fast. And we've intercepted him in the woods here. Three times as many troops. Easy win. I'm going to win a chicken dinner. I'm actually going to take the attrition penalty and lose 251 casualties. And I'm just going to go straight for his capital. Teach the capital down. And we now have 33% war score. And I'm going to engage him now up here. He's taken a holding. Can we intercept him on the way down? No, we can't. Stopped him. We've engaged him. Good. An opportunity to win. For the most part, relatively straightforward. We are taking some pretty mighty casualties, though, because they have a big advantage over us. Okay, another dangerous faction has enough power to press their claims, and it is an independence faction. Who are these people? 
for all the people that were in Lotharigia. And they're all not very pleased. So opportunity again to grant vassals. A lot of them are actual counts. Okay, one of the factors I'm running into here is they can siege down a lot quicker than me. So what I'm gonna have to do is hire some men at arms, go for onagers, and this will siege us just slightly faster. We're gonna have to deal with this annoying ping-ponging around the country to get the sieges on top, to get an advantage for the sieges. Drop the onagers here, siege the capital down again. I'm gonna move them back for a brief second. Just to recover some supplies, then I'll be continuing my sieges again. Oh, this is insanely lucky. We get the option to get a 50% chance to get Athletic. And Athletic is great because it gains extra health. Will we get it? Yes, we get it. Okay, we're going to go for Church and State now, which will max out relations practically permanent with our Realm Priest, meaning we'll gain all the levies from the Church, as well as all the gold from the Church. And trust me, they've got a lot of gold. Next up, we're going to go for Stewardship, Extra Monthly Income, and then go for This Is My Domain, because that's just a way of getting unlimited money in this game. It's so OP. Okay, the situation when it comes down to this liberation faction is it's not getting any easier. And by the looks of things, they're going to get what they want if we don't careful. So I'm going to try another little cheeky tactic. Because they're just over the threshold by 4%, what we can do is hop into mercenaries, scroll down and look for the one that has lots of mercenaries and is relatively cheap. This looks pretty good. The host of Viscount, hire him, 1,500 troops. And this means now the threshold will be slightly harder to get over. And there you go. Boom. All of them are dropped below the 80% threshold. <laughs> Easy. Be aware, though, this will cost you a lot of gold. So it's not something you want to do very often. It's just something you can do in an emergency. Another way of making a little bit of money in an emergency is to ransom off your prisoners. My advice to you is don't do this unless you need to. The people who ate you are better off in prison, which is the Queen of East Francia. She could be relatively powerful, so just be aware of that. Desperately need to end this war right now. I've been stuck in this war for way too long. And it's causing a lot of problems because we're hurting our levy size. And therefore making factions more and more likely to happen. Another emergency stack. Once again, this will put us in a lot of debt. But at the moment, we need to do it. And this will give us an extra 1,500 army size. And as we see, that it should push them below the threshold once again. There we go. We have achieved our objectives. 100% war score. Boom. We have now taken the kingdom of East Francia. We are very big and we are very blue and we are very, very big and scary. We are now over a vassal limit. So that's another thing we're going to have to deal with, which hurts our overall levy size. That will come back to bite us later on. So you just need to be aware of that. We also currently are at war with uh, Fruili, the Duchy of Fruili. And they want the kingdom of East Francia as well. Are they a carling? No. A lot of these holdings that we've been given to us. What we can do, though, is use these holdings as bargaining tools, similar to the vassals, that we can hand out the people that particularly dislike us to prevent factions. Because more than likely, now we've got double the amount of vassals we have to begin with. And that means we have double the problems with factions that will try to overthrow us. So let's do a few bits and pieces to try and hold back some of these factions. So I'm going to grant a vassal to you. I'm going to grant a title to you. You've got 50 relations, your account. Grant him two titles here plus 80 relations good more titles to hand out here here and here three more titles it gives 120 plus relations and they're just over the threshold and they've just dropped below the threshold okay so i can take a bit of a sigh of relief now because i gain a little bit more extra time meaning i can deal with the situation that i'm at war with in the south Good news is, though, I'm boosting relations with the Pope. I'm also earning lots and lots of money. One concern, though, is because I'm above the vassal limit, means there's too many people underneath me. I'm suffering a big loss in my levies and my taxes by 35%. I'm only seven over, though, so what I can do is do the classic strategy of just sticking a bunch of vassals underneath some of my dukes. Then we go into here, then we just shimmy them underneath. That's two, three, four, five, six, and then seven. The downside to this is you are making some of the vassals underneath you really beefy and really strong. So if they do start to dislike you, you're gonna be in a bad situation because they're gonna grow incredibly powerful factions. There we go, we're no longer the vassal limit. And now we have, at the moment, a stable realm. Who would have thought we need to fix this situation? Well, I could do is raise the levies really quickly to deal with a peasant faction as well. Nice and funny. Raise the levies here and take care of the peasants as well. And also take care of the Italians that are trying to brust us through in the south here. Multitasking for the win. We've got our first trade slot now, so we're going to go for golden obligations and then this is my domain. We want to earn as much money as possible. We're going to need to do that. Rebel faction has been defeated. Good. Okay, the little war in the south has been fixed. No longer pressing your claim now. They're a vassal inside of Italy once again, which is convenient actually. With winning that war, we just leveled up our prestige 
prestige up to the next level. And uh, we have this lovely decision up here. Restore the Holy Roman Empire. Now, you could if you wanted to just create the Empire of Frank here, but this is way more fun. Boom. To be able to do this, you need to have good relationships with the Pope or a hook on the Pope. You gain 750 prestige, you are, you've got the Holy Roman Empire, and you are now known as the Great. All direct vassals gain plus 50 opinion, which I think could cause a lot of these factions to dissolve. Yeah, they do. Now, we can declare war to press our title for the Kingdom of Bavaria. It's a kingdom now. It's no longer a duchy, and it is ruled by a Carling which we need to knock out for the achievement. Raise the levies right here. We can get some more men-at-arms too. We'll get some pikemen and some light horsemen. Make those bigger. There we go, that'll do. Raise the levies. And we get 100% war score because we have just captured the King of Bavaria <laughs> in the first battle. Oh my god, I love it when this happens. Okay, well, alternatively, you'd have to push to grab these holdings and then take the capital and fight a few battles. The truth is you've got twice as many levies in them, so it's an easy win. Another faction is a problem. We have Franconian Catholic Popularists. Oh dear. The also the beauty of This Is My Domain is the event, when you fire it, a lot of the time gives you an option to get some dread. There you go, extra 20 dread. And now there's only two Carlings that are independent. Charles II, the great of the Holy Roman Empire, no longer bold, but now he's great. And also the King of Italy. King Louis II, the younger of Italy, who is excommunicated, wow. He's not a very good Christian, unlike me, who's holy and Roman. Ah! If you really want to invest into Dread and make sure that no one ever joins a faction ever again, my advice is go for Intrigue, go for Intimidation Focus, and then work down Torture Path. If you ever reach Forever Infamous, no one will ever stand against you. I don't like how powerful this faction is. I know they can't push their ultimatum, but it frustrates me that I've become the Holy Roman Empire. I'm so powerful. People are still plotting behind the scenes. This guy really hates me. He really, really, really detests me. I think we should just deal with this once and for all. This was the old king of Bavaria. Uh, murder. Damn, morality. Come on, this is the Middle Ages. Also, one other thing you can do too is look in your prisoners and execute anyone who isn't Catholic. And the result of this is you'll gain more dread and you won't suffer from any penalties. So just mass murder everyone who isn't Catholic. And that gave us 66 dread. This hopefully it should make things a lot easier. Here we've got 95% chance of murdering now. It looks like we've got more agents that have joined the plot. 95% chance to kill him. And, oh, it failed. No, it failed. Uh, okay, we'll try again. We're gonna extort more subjects to 84 dread. <laughs> We're reaching the point now that it's unlikely that anyone will join a faction. And even the main faction had a lot of power behind it. Starting to lose momentum. We lost some money right now, so we can make our men at arms as big as possible. Max them out all at level three. And this will increase the total amount of our army size. Our army projection meaning that people are less likely to, to mess around with us. Anyway, another opportunity now to try and kill Prince of Bavaria. He is dead. And now we don't have to deal with this annoying faction system. One war to liberate everyone. And they've got a fairly large army too. More than likely it's because they're allied to Brittany and Bar and Meath. Fair enough. I think what we'll probably do then to begin with is just start off by raising our army in the west, taking out Brittany. We are definitely not going to leave Brittany alone. I don't want Brittany to be that thorn in my side. And whenever there's a chance here, because we've got so many levies, and there's a breach, in this case a large breach in their front line, see the ladders here, we can assault the fort and just take it out. You know, most of the battles have been fought here near Brittany. We've captured half of their lands and beaten their armies up dozens of times now. Now we're going to push and take the capital. One thing to be aware of is you will go low on supply every now and then. So you might have to split up your armies just to get supply back. There we go. Supply is up and running again. I'm going to go straight for the capital of Italy. And straight away there's a breach. I'm going to assault it with the fort. Good. Secured the capital. I'm going to go back to Brittany in the west and deal with all these armies sieging down my lands. There we go. And we've, uh, I think we've captured the king. Oh no, we've not captured the king. We've, we've done something. We've captured someone. Let's have a look. The war score plus 50% because we've captured the air. Okay, there we go. Enforce the demands. Italy has been absorbed. Disband the armies. And there you go. Carling consolidation. We go in to find characters. And there you can see now the only Carling that is independent is me. As the Holy Roman Emperor. We're only 64 years old and our, our health is so good right now. And the beauty of that now is we have an extra 10, 15 years to do whatever we please. No one will try and stop us. Some of the things I'd recommend you would do. Go for divine retribution. And what you can do then is torture a bunch of the people in your prison. And execute the ones that aren't Christians. Max out your dread at 100. Then you get the dreadful achievement as well. More than likely, factions will become impossible at that point. Also another idea would be go for the assemblies. That allows you to get limited crown authority. 
majority and then at that point you can work towards partition so you don't have to deal with a massive splintering of your realm the succession is going to be an absolute pen in the ass because you're going to have to disinherit a bunch of people to be able to hold your realm together it's going to be a fun time hey did you enjoy this video let me know by leaving a like and comment below any other suggestions of who i should play or where i should play in crusader kings 3 let me know guys i really enjoy crusader kings 3 as you probably noticed and i'd love to play it more so let me know guys if you love this game and you want to see more of my videos with it let me know in the comments after that i should have an awesome day and i'll see you guys next time bye i'm seeing so much positivity on discord on twitter all over the community thank you for continuing to support me